It says that I'm recording. I don't see anything could possibly go wrong from here. Hey, folks, back here with the crew from Hot Spotty talking about a couple new things they've gotten um, up since the last time we talked, which is the first is, I think, POCV11 stuff, uh, which will be live by the time this comes out. And then the second is the payments work that they've been doing. So, Daniel, you want to give me kind of a, a brief overview of what you guys have been working on? Yeah, of course. Um, it's been very, very busy at the Hot Spotty office in the past few weeks and months. Um, and we are always trying to keep our like code base in in sync with what Helium is doing, right? And then they just released they're gonna do the POC V11, which changed a lot of things that people have been doing in the past. Because um, like once they release the hexes, people are like okay, I can assert my hotspot, you know, a little bit to the side, to the left, in order to get out of some hex uh, in, in, to increase the reward scale. And that was not a, I don't think it's a bad thing, but then the counterpart from Helium was to release like a smarter algorithm that can make sure people don't assert the hotspots too far. Um, and that's what we've been working on trying to help people. Cause sometimes, you know, you, you assert your hotspot far away, then you forget about, cause you have like hundreds of hotspots and in hotspot now you can easily tell you like, if you have the location that is the physical location of your hotspot, then you have in the blockchain, the location that is the hotspot is asserted. And then we can match everything, all your hotspots and locations. And it can have like a little report telling like, oh, just remember this hotspot is too far away from where it should be. You should do something. Otherwise, you're going to be penalized by um, the POC V11 that's coming up pretty soon. Cool. Let's right. talk about the, the two reasons that I think that you it's it's. One reason is is totally okay to misassert your hotspot, and the other reason is people are just going to do it, so I'm not going to pretend they're not. So the first reason I think it's completely fine to do it, and I'm saying within I think 150 meters, I think you guys have said 100 meters, is that right? Somewhere between there is is okay, and I think number one that's okay just for privacy reasons. If you don't want to put the thing on your house, you don't want people coming to your door, you don't want people knowing where your hotspot is. I think anywhere within 150 meters of where it is or 100, depending on who you talk to, is totally fine, uh, completely legit. The second reason, and people are just going to do this, whether it's legit or not, is they want to clear a hex. They're in a res 8 hex. They want to get over the line. They're in a res 9 hex with too many other hotspots. They want to get over the line. People are just going to do that, and they want to know like, practically what can they do and not be penalized. And again, I think that's that 100 to 150 meter radius. You're probably fine in there. In the long run, that's not great but it's not not super bad. Are you guys seeing anything different from those ideas or anything to add to that? Not, not that I can think. I think that was a very good uh, resume. I don't know if anybody else has anything on that. Um, I think the growth of the network is kind of like, they try to improve the network and, and then try to, like one idea that they came with the hexes, for example, was to, we don't want to have one person that has like 100 hotspots inside their living room and making a lot of money from the connections. So then they implemented a, a fix for that. And then that forced people to spread out their hotspot, at least in, in terms of assertion. And the next step would be like, it's it's kind of like, um, I don't think Helium see this thing. I mean, I'm not Helium, but I think uh, they don't see it as a negative thing. It's, it's kind of like a natural growth of the network that you kind of try to force people with code to do the right thing. Um, but I also think, like you said, is the, the privacy is very important for a lot of people. I remember stories from last year that there was like some people walking around the neighborhood. They saw an, they saw an antenna on the house. They went to knock and talk to the person about the antenna to like ask, either ask questions or see where they got the hotspot, what they can, you know. Yeah. That could be kind of creepy, you know. If you, Super if, creepy. And I think it was much more likely early summer of 2021 when hotspots were going for like 10 grand on ebay and i think the stuff i was hearing was that a hotspot would go online and within a day or two some guys would show up at the door and be like hey you want to sell your hotspot i can make that thing work and especially yeah. if it was at a host house it just made it for an uncomfortable conversation okay so those are the two kind of things reasons that you might miss assert your hotspot can you guys walk me through what you've been working on for this poc v11 so people can kind of see how that's going to affect them and how they want to make sure that they place their hotspot correctly so uh, what Daniel already um, said earlier is that basically it's an evolution, right? So uh, we started with a 
a certain version of um, BOC, like uh, proof of coverage, the proof of coverage uh, mechanism. But then people started gaming it by putting hotspots in their living room. And then more and more mechanisms got added to the network, um, like to the proof of coverage mechanism in order to basically um, protect this uh, behavior and this wrong behavior and then like counter uh, it. And so one of the things is uh, HIP17, which basically um like a science like a score uh, in terms of like how cluttered your area is or how how densely populated it is to spread out and that's the assertion that uh, that we talked about earlier the the location assertion but another thing is also um invalidate witnesses um like proof of coverage activity between two hotspots uh, based on the rssi value and the snr value so it's basically looking at okay if the signal strength is just way too high based on the the location you asserted it's, it's just physically not possible yep. and um and that is that is also another mechanism that now changed with POC v11 because the reality is that um you um like it's also penalizing people that are doing things right for example if you're uh, you're using a stronger antenna for example, and you're actually served in the correct uh, position, but then um, like your neighbor a bit further uh, also has a strong antenna. And then you're basically the signals uh, that you're sending to each other are just way too high. And then this mechanism will then tell you, will basically invalidate your witnesses because it's yeah. assuming like it's way too high, uh, you're, you're basically cheating, but you might not actually be cheating. And so um, part of POC V11 is, uh, allows for tweaking, um, like basically allows for validating uh, these kind of use cases by um, asking everyone to update their antenna information um, on the blockchain so that the mechanism will now take it, to in, take it into account. I will basically look at Okay, um, these are the values like of the, um, the connections that are made, the beacons that are sent out, and this is based on you know these antennas, and therefore it's physically possible given the distance, given the um, the like the antenna um, gain, etc. Is this physically possible? Yes. Okay, then we'll uh, validate it. If it's not, then we'll invalidate it. And that is also why, like, um, you can actually be penalized, or you will be penalized now if you don't enter that information for your hotspots. So, um, so these are all things basically we try to surface in a in an easy way, like a user friendly way with Hotspotty. And it's it's not rocket science. It's basically going to show you like attention list of your hotspots that are basically to be updated. And if you have many hotspots, it makes more sense to have these kind of lists because um you know you might just lose track of what you did or what you didn't do yeah, yeah. let's I'll run stop here really, hang on mm -hmm. a second let's run through really quickly a poc v11 like the two big changes on poc 11 are number one they're going to drop the snr it's just going to be rssi and um number two is what you're talking about with the radio input stuff now there's some funkiness with that in that the euro radio the eu868 just doesn't allow you to push out as much power and so your antenna choice is a little bit different than in the us where we're allowed to push out um, much much more but those are the two things that are coming down the pipe is that basically if you put in a 9 dbi antenna that's what you're running is that helium or the, the blockchain will instruct your radio to push out nine less dbi so that in theory everybody should be pushing out um, the same amount of power so we can accurately measure what's going on. And I, I, obviously we're gonna see people try and figure this out, how it's gonna work best for them. But I think Helium's got this thing pretty well dialed yeah. in. I guess we'll see. Yeah, I like I like to see also they adding more variables to the equation, right? Before it was just the hotspot and then they added the location of the assertion in the algorithm and now they're adding, like it's more and more variables into the, and then the algorithm that's gonna like build into this beast of machine. Yep. Yeah. And the big takeaway for me on all of this, you know, I think it's really important that we have tools like what you guys are about to show me, but is the big takeaway is look, if you just do a good job and you accurately report what you've done, you're the most likely to earn the most. 
right? And as soon yeah. as you start moving away from any of that, if you do a shitty job or if you don't accurately report what you're doing, you're just going to earn less and less. So I think, Daniel, back to your point of kind of Helium using code to direct behavior, it's it's a pretty cool thing to it's, be a part of. Yes, yeah, that's the blockchain, right? That's like I think a lot of the blockchain does that. There is no fighting against people. You can only fight with code. And yep. that's and what they've been doing. Take it. Yeah. All right, Max, walk me through. What's going on, dog? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, this workspace has a couple of hotspots. You can add them by just adding a wallet here, like add wallet based on a hotspot, or you can add hotspots manually. So this basically has a list of hotspots. Yep. And what you see in the dashboard is um, at the bottom. So this is just like an overview of your wallet balance, some you know, other cool things. Uh, but then at the bottom, you see attention lists. And uh, some of them are basically relevant to uh, POC v11, which is basically it instructs or it, it's like a call to attention to uh, update your antenna gain information and update your uh, location, like your assertion to be like accurate. So um, one thing is this one, like if you don't have your antenna gain set, then it will surface the hotspot here. Um, and by the way, if you click on it, uh, in the info tab, you can see this information. Antenna gain is this. Uh, installation height is this. That's also um, that you can also change that information. As far as I know, this is this information is not used currently, um, but it can in the future. So it doesn't hurt also adding that information. Um, Okay, let's go back to the workspace. It's something like 50, 55 cents US to change it. So it's not like, oh my God, I'm not going to spend $30 to change these things. It's yeah. pennies. And, and and like you said, it's it's less work to do the right job in terms of just starting the light, right location. You don't need to like play around and then just like put the, the altitude and then the antenna again. It's easier, I think, for new installs than old installs, right? Because old installs, people spend their time, let's say, doing the... Yeah, I mean, there's significant analytics. incentives to, to max out gains. So people really work super hard. Of course. Analysis. I don't think anybody's like, I couldn't say wrong for doing these things. There is, it's just a uh, cat, how to say cat and mouse game. Cat and mouse game, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then um, another card is this one. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of cut off, but you can see it if you hover. So, essentially, what's going to happen? Let's say that you don't enter the right antenna gain, you uh, assert it far away. Like, essentially, what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of uh, invalid witnesses um, after POC V11 is going live. And that's the like the ethos about this card is you're basically surfacing the hotspots that have over 50% invalid witnesses. Uh, right. So you can click on it and then here, I mean, there's not a lot of witnesses, so it might actually be okay in this. I mean, it's not okay to have so many invalid, but it might be because it's too close to other hotspots. But uh, by the way, the, the dots, like the red dots are invalid witnesses and the green ones are valid. Um, so that's just the thing. Like if you, if you have a lot of hotspots, this list can uh, like uh, put your attention to hotspots that might actually have been either wrongly asserted or have no antenna gain set. Um, okay, cool. So the stuff that you guys are showing me so far is is really about making sure that you're not missing opportunities. We're not into kind of maximizing opportunities yet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, POC v11, yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Very cool, right. okay. And then the last thing is, um, so basically in, in Hotspot, you, um, it's like a CRM for uh, Hotspot deploys. Mm -hmm. um so you can add you know your contact information and then if people are actually hosting your hotspots you can associate these contacts with uh, oh, the locations so awesome. nice work guys <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so then i mean you these hotspots uh these hosts provide you with locations where you can install your hotspots so then these locations uh, can be added here and then um, what you can essentially do with installs is you can tell, okay, this hotspot is installed. Um, yeah, let's check it here. This hotspot is installed in this location uh, from this point in time, and there's no uninstall, which means that it's actively installed right now. And then you can also add commissions, which is part of the, the commission system uh, that we launched uh, earlier this week, um, where you can say like, okay, this person, um, 
for his services provided, like his hosting services, um, he will get 20% um, of all of the earnings of this hotspot. Um, but you essentially what you're- a stupid question. Like, does that happen automatically? Do you kind of attach your wallet to this or does it just spit out a sheet that says, hey, you need to pay, you know, two h &T to this guy this month, but that's on you to do that manually. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. We, I can show it, it's in the commission, commission report. report. I, can, I can show it in a bit, but let's just okay. uh, go back here. So if you click here, what, what you basically see is, so this is the installs detail page, um, and it basically shows the hotspot, and it shows the install that you link to it, and it shows a line uh, connecting them. And as you can see here, this line is pretty long. We did it on purpose like to, to illustrate what would happen. But basically, if you go here, you'll see that it's like 6,000 uh, meters uh, away. If you go here, if you want to see it in Imperial uh, distance units. Uh, we call those freedom units, Max. <laughs> How? <laughs> we call those freedom units in America. <laughs> freedom. OK, OK. <laughs> 22,000 freedom units. Yeah. Here you have them, right? Okay. <laughs> a lot of them. So um, cool. This is, it's just saying like, hey, it's asserted on the blockchain in one place, but we're actually, we know it's in another place. And this is just a way for you guys to, or for anyone to keep track of where it is versus where it's asserted. Obviously, this is a, an yeah, egregious yeah. example of what not yeah. to do. But, okay, cool. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and then in the workspace, um, you'll see another card, which basically says, okay, this is asserted over 150 meters away based on the location you linked to that yep. hotspot using an install. Um, yeah, so that's basically, and then of course we have, not of course, but then we also have an advanced placement uh, simulation tool, um, which we can also illustrate. So let's say we actually want to correct this and, and we want to put it near to where it actually is. You can come here, go to reward scaling, and then we have added placements. So if you click there, essentially it allows you to then like select a place where you uh, where you feel comfortable that's close to the the location but still you know it's within the privacy um like boundaries that you that you're comfortable with this is like six thousand meters away uh, which kind of is the same distance that we said before so let's confirm um so oh what just happened okay so ah, okay so you're using yeah. you're using the map to say like hey i want to move this thing and put it somewhere else for whatever reason the map is showing you where not to put it, right? It's and also like where you could put it, where it's not going to get scaled as badly. Is that am I reading reading that right? Um, or yeah, kind of. So else? yeah, so I, I didn't fully understand you, but basically what this allows you to do is it uh, simulates. So let's say you have fifty hotspots and um, you want to research locations to comply with POC V eleven, etc. If you do it one by one and then you go, um, you know, you look at the reward scaling and the hexes and all of that one by one, they might affect each other because it might be uh, in their, in each other's proximity. So basically what this allows you to do is you can simulate it one by one, like uh, the placement, and then you'll see a bunch of lines all over the place. But essentially it's, it calculates the reward scales or the transmit scales of the whole area over and over again using this updated location. So yeah, that's you when said. you're going to when you're going to go over like your whole fleets and assert all locations near by where they actually are, then you're comfortable that it's do it's done in an optimized way because they're all taken into account in this like this is kind of messy because the whole area is kind of screwed, but uh in like more remote locations like here or whatever, it's going to make more sense for you to do that. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so there's that, and you also see the the length, like the distance here on the line. And then in terms of um, commissions, uh, like the actual payments, um, so we have a couple of different ways of doing it. Um, one way, it's just not the best way, but um, here there's actually a property added which reflects the like the past month and the month before the rewards of that. So this column basically tells you, okay, this hotspot earned this amount in November, this amount in October. So if you then um, export all of the hotspots, it will export all of the columns for each of the hotspots. And then you'll just get a CSV file where you can do these calculations manually. This is like 
not a preferred way, but if you do want this information, you can export it here. Okay. Then another thing is export all the hotspot rewards. So um, this allows you to basically choose a date range and then um, choose a secondary currency will will support multiple currencies. And basically it will uh, show a list of all of the rewards that were uh, earned for all of your hotspots during this time period based on this time zone. And it will also show the uh, the value based in this secondary currency of each reward at the exchange rate at that particular point in time, which is for tax purposes uh, what's required. And we also yeah. generate allow you to generate a report for that. So that's another thing, which is still not commissions related, but like it's it's something we added recently as well because people are asking for it. Sure. And then there's the, the actual commissions report. So this basically um, allows you to generate a report, which will be done automatically soon, like after the end of the month. Um, let's maybe go to the settings first. There's a commissions uh, section, which basically allows you to set the default uh, time zone. So let's say like in our case, it's Lisbon. Um, then you can also create um, like templates. Um, so a template would be, for example, like referral or host, as you already see here, but you can have like a partner, partner template, percentage of reward will have multiple like choices, like fixed fees, et cetera, in h &T. So let's say a partner fee, uh, earns 15% uh, and it's not the default template. Then it will it will show up here. And if then we go to this install, for example, um, Actually, there's another location. Um, maybe we can use this to add an install. Um, like add install for this location. We need a hotspot. Um, let's select dry bone, the other one. Like dry bone. Ding -ding. Uh, installed. Let's say that it's installed a couple of months ago. Like here. Uh, it's not uninstalled. And in terms of commissions, um, Let's select a template, the partner. Let's say that we, we used someone, uh, someone's help to install this. And then we select uh, Andy, um, which will automatically set to the 15%, but you can update it if you want. So now Andy is a partner for this particular install and we'll get 15% HT. And you can select uh, multiple templates or multiple. Um... I guess yes. for anything for hotspot multiple templates or is it, you can change each one manually so it becomes like a custom instead of you see yeah. if the install for example there's partner but then if you change to like seven percent it's going to show as um custom, custom i think yeah. so so let's say if yeah. you do like uh, a new commission from scratch like you just say kelly did something for your installs and you want to reward her for it so let's say you start with h and t you say that she should Earn like three percent, and and that's it. Like Kelly will now earn a custom, like based on a custom thing. Uh, so she will earn three percent. Okay. Um, so let me just make sure I'm getting that straight. So yeah, the the way you guys are tracking that is with this idea that you're thinking of as an install, and an install can have multiple people or multiple, I guess, labels assigned to it, and those labels determine who gets paid how much. Is that it's right? Like, yeah, it's, the labels are just like a side effect. We just compute this for like to be easier on the eye, uh, and you can also click on it and go to the like to this person. Uh, also, when it's a when it's a person that's like interacting with that, you can see there's a it's very tiny, but there's a little dollar sign next to the name. Yeah, here. So okay. that that means that it's like a it's a commission uh, percentage or a commission partner. Got it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's cool. The alternative is. Yeah, you can have this this location can, for example, be linked to another person, but that person's not like uh, it doesn't have any commission. So if mm -hmm. I go here and I add, for example, another contact. So no, this is the install. Uh, this location, I added the location. I add a new contact, or let's say uh, Jim. I don't know if Jim's already related to this. Jim, all right. Now Jim shows up as a person that's related to this location, and Kelly is related and Andy with a dollar sign because they 
they basically there's an active install linked to this location where they are uh, uh, receiving commissions from whereas gym is just a related contact yeah like let me just say something here like for example one thing that you, you may want to do this as an example uh imagine that the hotspot is installed in your grandmother's house she's not going to be necessarily getting a commission from that but you want to have her her contact in the location because maybe you want to have her phone number her email if something goes wrong you want to call like can you just like see what happened and maybe she unplugged it to use the iron machine or something like that you know so yep. that so she's a she's related to the location but not necessarily with the commission right uh, so yeah. this is why we have the difference yep so i'm thinking of it as like say in this dry bone penguin example jim helper is maybe the guy you paid 100 bucks to do the install but that's it he doesn't get an ongoing commission for it but Andy's exactly. the person who referred kelly or, or whatever it is so like they both get their piece of the pie over over time yeah that, that makes exactly. sense. i can see how i do exactly that. and let's let's make that's one more example of why it makes sense to link contacts so because it's in a different point in time usually usually let's say you have a bunch of hotspots to deploy but um before you receive your hotspots you're doing your homework and you're basically talking to, to people, finding hosts, etc. So, and they will surface locations to you. So basically, I'm just going to reverse engineer this a bit. So these are hotspots, like fierce, concrete, whatever uh, is here. Um, so I'm just going to close this open location. So let's say one of your friends uh, has a, an apartment over here. And this is a hotspot that's not yet there. Just pretend it's not there um so let's say your friend lives here and uh gives you the address you enter it uh all of the information you can even say like uh, friend's place oh, place uh, installation height they can install it on the roof which is like 26 meters high and then you want to immediately like add optimistic you are that's awesome <laughs> exactly uh, and then like okay let's just add your friend like friend uh, like x y um payment methods you could add it it's not necessary for now but but basically you already link this contact to this location in case in the future you're actually going to install a hotspot there then you're already Link, you, you have all the information ready and we basically fast track the whole process and you'll see how so so right now i'm going to save this um so this is the location um actually do we remember the name of this hotspot uh it's a rat dancer with the red red naked remember Rattles naked. The hot... it's this one okay okay yes um yeah so so basically um just remember that um in the workspace Cheers. settings we have uh commission reports and the host which is 20 percent HT rewards is the default setup if now we go to this um like hotspot and we basically we receive the hotspot we want to inst install it in this place so in this point in time uh, let's say that we did install it here physically and then installs in, in the context of hotspot, they basically, they represent what happens in real life, right? You go, you go to that place, you physically install it, and then the installs in hotspot are just keeping track of what happened over time. So physically it's there. So you want to keep track of it. So you add an install. So you click this and then you, you got to link it to the location. In this case, the friend's place, you install it, let's say today, but mm -hmm. For the purpose of like commission agreements, let's say that we installed like a couple of months ago, uh, you didn't uninstall it, and automatically, as you can see, because this location already had linked the contact, it automatically entered the data for your friend X Y based on the default uh, template. So yeah, okay. if you if you do the work up front to enter your CRM like properly with all the contact details with all the the locations properly, then it's going to be a breeze in like uh, like entering commissions. You, you, there's no work. You could actually go here and update it, but you don't need to. It's already done basically. Got it. And so, CRM is customer relations management for for those of us who aren't in, who don't normally. Yeah. Like sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Um, and now, and now also because this location is now linked to an active install, it's not going to um, be taken into account for the transmit scale simulations. Um, just that's also another another side effect that you might be aware of. Because if you have like, if you, go that. yes. Um, so let's say this is a hotspot, and the transmit scale is like uh, zero point thirty four. If now I add a location, like literally on top of it, like let's say like here, uh, save. Um, it's by default included in transmit scale simulations. And the result is that it's very close to this one. And therefore now it has a transmit scale of 0 0.17. But if you actually install this hotspot there, then um, you make the connection like we did with this hotspot uh, location. Like if you go here, installs, you click on the install, you see them linked. So um, because they're linked, it automatically disabled this hotspot from the transmit scale calculations. So if you if you were to install um, like this hotspot here, then what would happen is in the reward scale tab, it would automatically disable it. And therefore, this is just going to be the accurate transmit scale that you see in the blockchain. Huh. Does that make sense? <laughs> no. But so it... basically, yeah. So basically, once you have an install and, and a hotspot connected, they don't, it's, it's only one, becomes only one into the reward calculation. Ah, okay, because, now I got it. Yep, yep. They're the same thing. Because if you want if you want to put an install without a hotspot, it means you want to try to simulate what would happen if you put a hotspot there. Okay. So, because before, uh, you, you, when you when, when you have the hotspot and the, the location that you want to put, they, they're just one. They shouldn't become two. They shouldn't interfere with each other. Right. Okay, that, that makes more sense. Just the verbiage. So, it's there's an install, which is... It's like you're where, planning, right, for the future. Like so you, and then there's where it actually is asserted. And then when you connect both together, yeah. they don't they don't have two in entities uh, interfering with the reward scale. Okay. Yes, it's a bit. Yeah, it, it gets complicated, but that's also. I mean, this. The other side of it is it gets also very powerful, right? If you do this properly and you understand it, there's a learning curve yeah. to it for sure, but. It can save you a lot of time if you do this properly. Um, um, you know, like what you saw here, right? Like now you have three. So it automatically surfaced these hotspots. And for POC V11, like you're basically doing it wrong. Um, or you're going to get penalized if, if you don't do anything. And those uh, that, yeah. that thing that you just showed me, that's based on where your Let's see. That's based on what the blockchain is seeing, or what? No, it's 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 looking at um, the installs that you enter, which is an install is essentially just like uh, making a connection between a location that you enter, like for assessment and where you can potentially install a hotspot and an actual hotspot. It's you telling Hotspotty your Hotspotty workspace, like, okay, look, this hotspot I installed it there from that point in time until that point in time. And then because you um, defined this relationship, you might as well also define relationship with your uh, contacts in the form of commissions, et cetera. That's basically what installs are about. They, they represent your reality of your hotspot deployments. They keep and, track uh, of what's happening with your hotspots over time. Hmm. Uh, okay. A hotspot location, it comes from the blockchain. And then the location that you put in the system, it's it's yours, right? It's only for your workspace. So I think the the flow that would go, imagine if you order hotspot, you go like you assess the location, then you put a location, and then once you actually install the hotspot, you connect the hotspot with that location, and then you can add the contacts, and then at the end, what combines the location, the hotspot, and the contacts is an install, and then the install can have the commission agreements and everything. So that's like the 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 for, like the, the install is everything. What's an install? Install is like a hot pot, a hotspot that has a name, has a certain the blockchain, and then the location is like a physical location of the hotspot and has everybody that's connected to that event, which is an install, right? The host, the referrals, etc. 
So the last part of the puzzle is the install. And then once you have the, all the information from the install, then you can generate the commission report, you know, which is like the payments and all the calculations that you set, you, you set up before, like oh, Jimmy, Jim Harper is gonna get 10%. So you don't need to manually calculate, you know, you can go to the commission report that does all the, the calculations for you. Okay. I don't know if you wanna show the commission report, Max, or you plan to do it later. Yeah, sure. And like on the installs page, like you basically see the line which connects the lo like location. A location is um, basically a circle with a like a another circle around. And then the physical like the the solid dot is where the hotspot is asserted in the blockchain. So this is what you entered, and this is what you entered in the Helium app and reflected in the blockchain, basically. Got it. Okay, that makes yep. No, I'm sorry. So they shouldn't be that that far apart. This is just for illustrative purposes, but essentially they should be like very close to each other, like less than 150 meters. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That makes more That's sense. That's why they I, create I, I the line. You want myself? It makes way more sense. It's always the way it is, right? Yeah, with with the line, it will also surface. Like if you entered all your data properly, it will already see. Like okay, I do see lines here, which basically means like these are gonna get penalized by. V11, I should actually, you visually see like the action you need to take based right. on like your, like your previously installed fleet or whatever. Um, yeah. And then there's the commission uh, reports. Um, so you can generate a report um, for, let's say like this automatically selects uh, the previous month, but you can manually update that as well. Um, Let's say currency H and T is the only thing you support right now to like support more, and then the time zone. Like let's just do Lisbon. Um, generate report can take a while depending on like how many hotspots you have. So this is like the one that just showed up here. Um, so you basically your hotspots all together they earned like forty seven H and T in the past month or in that period that you specified, but in this case, it's October. And uh, in terms of commissions, this is the amount of commissions that you ought to pay out uh, to your hosts or referrals or whatever. So you click it, and then what you see here is an overview of you know all of the contacts and, um, well, some distinct um, automated labels that reflect what kind of commission agreements you have and why they're even here. If you have contacts that don't have any commissions, they will not even show up here because there's nothing to, to pay or there's no relationship with commissions. Yep. Here at the top, you see the month or the period of time uh, for the commission report and the currency. And do stop me when you have questions. No, so I, I'm just seeing like you'd put in Jim earlier and Jim Halpert didn't get a commission, so he's not on here. Like this, this is making sense to me. Cool, super cool. And cool. then you can open the details. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, so like I'm Andy, uh, yeah. if you if you click to uh, on on Andy's page, you'll see that he has one payment method, um, which is an H and T wallet. Uh, because he has an H and T wallet to find, actually, you can go to payments and it's going to show all the transactions that happened and if they're cleared or pending, etc. You can even open and you can see the transaction, the transaction ID, sender, recipient, etc. It seems yeah. zero, but it's most likely 0 0.0001 or something. Um, okay. that, so, are you able to trigger that payment from within Hotspotty or you still have to go into your wallet and kind of look at Hotspotty and be like, oh, I owe this guy 2.59 and do a, a manual transfer there? Yeah, well, I'll get to that right okay. now, actually. Um, yeah, but but just bear in mind, like based on the uh, contacts, like payment methods, you can see here the the history of transactions that happened, which is very useful because we generate QR codes based on commission reports that you can, with one scan from your wallet app, you pay everyone basically, uh, depending on how many you need very to pay. Cool. But no, because of that, that yeah. what we actually do is we uh, include a payment memo, which allows us to um, um, like cross-reference it to your own commission report. So in this particular case, like if you if you pay the commission report, which actually paid Andy, 
um, then you see the transaction here where this like um, his wallet was part of and you'll also see a link to the commission report so essentially you can see okay i paid this guy and and if you click through you can drill down and see exactly where this payment is coming from what kind of like why you're paying him in the first place because you can see the installs and etc so let's go back to the the report um so as you can see here um only two of them actually have um like a wallet signed which means that you do have to pay your friend x y to h and t but you can't right now because there's information missing so one way is you can just say okay i'm gonna pay these two and press pay contacts or if you don't do that um we can illustrate like what we do with, in that uh, use case you can also click on open details and this will show an overview like okay these 2.599 h and t uh, are for the month october h and t is just like a summary of the, of this and then you, you can see the host you can click through if you want to you can see an overview of the payment methods that you have etc and then you see the, the actual commissions so this person has a host uh, basically is a host for this install is a partner in this install you see the percentages and you can also see the total amounts for this period of time uh, of this commission for this install and if you click here you basically see all of the the amounts they earned at each point in time. Yeah, so yeah. these are all the rewards for this hotspot yep. multiplied by 0 0.2 in this case. Sure. Oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, I can Thanks. see why you guys haven't been seeing the sun at all. This is a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> pay, now pay the people. Pay, 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 pay. I'm so excited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay. You click no, here. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, and then, and then basically what you see is, okay, you have two valid contacts, valid and invalid why and then we basically say why it is some of them might have been installed like um might have been a host of a hotspot but even that period it didn't get any um rewards because it was offline or whatever then it would just show invalid contact for this payment because there's just nothing to pay to this person another reason might be um okay there's no default payment method for h and t which basically will also you know exclude them from the payment uh, system uh, but you can you can fix it easy you just go here um add payment methods you just add it i don't know like we, we could do that but yep. like, that's not it. In that's fine, yeah. Yep. yeah um and then okay so what what you have here is um you either have a qr code uh, payment so you just click here you see the qr code you see which contacts are included even if you want to see the details you can pull it up here you just scan this with your uh wallet um app uh, helium wallet app it includes the payment memos etc and then that will automatically you know, pay the right people but it will also show in the like trend like payment transactions table that we showed earlier it will show that transaction um and like reference back to this commission report um and yeah so how this works as well is if you have let's say like 50 um contacts to pay this will automatically combine up to 30 contacts in one qr code and then it will just show the batches underneath each other so you can essentially do 50 like just in two QR code scans, you just do like this. Push, pretty, is that like the limitation of the blockchain, or is that like, there's got to be some reason that's limited? Yeah, the the reason is the QR codes. Um, like, I mean, we we use a library. If you have like a QR code, is essentially like a, an encoded version of uh, like a data a piece of data, yep, and so that data different. becomes bigger and bigger if you have if you add more contacts because a contact is essentially an HNT wallet, which is a very long string of text. Yep. So yep. it becomes like extremely small blocks. And at some point, it just stops rendering. Um, so yeah, I mean, 30 is still fine, right? We can squeeze it up to uh, 40. But then we can't really add the payment memos. And I think it's kind of neat to have the, the cross reference to the commission reports, etc. Et so we're going to keep it like that. And it's cool. fairly easy, right? To just if you have like, 
I don't know, like 120 is just four, four, uh, four transactions yep. away and, and it's not too hard. If you do have a lot of hotspots, um, you can install this, the command line interface and then you can just simply download the JSON file. And um, there's a command that allows you to just point to this JSON file, execute the payment from your local like environment yep. and get it over with and it's gonna do it as well. So, yeah, yeah I mean, maybe for like long, like, like big installers may do that. You know, if they want to pay a thousand people, they just download the file, press one line, press enter, done. Yep. Yeah, and that's uh, that's kind of it. Um, still so some there, work to do. I'm just thinking that through because I recently had a, an interaction with a, with a CLI wallet, and that thing, if you're not into it, is just a giant pain in the ass. Are you guys going to make it? Kind of one of the long term things is to make the QR code maybe point to some file that then allows you to do 2000 at once or 3000 at once? Or do you think that there's, there's no clear way for you guys to, to make no, like a there, button? There, there is, but um, we're not going to disclose it uh, for now. Yeah, um, okay, cool. So it's yeah. coming at some point, but right now it's, yes. it's not there. All right, cool. Yes, yes, exactly. Don't freak my um, clients out. They're like, dude, I'm not paying 30 people at a time when I got 3,000 people to pay, and nobody wants to deal with this CLI wallet shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still fairly easy, right? With the QR codes, you yeah, can also yeah, do it for you. Sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, there. So that's it. And you can also like select, uh, you know, if if you want to leave out some of them, uh, you just say select all. You unselect like two, and then you press pay contacts and it should actually exclude them. It doesn't, um, which is bug, but I'll fix it tonight. Um, anyway, you get the feeling, right? Yeah, no, you super, get the idea. super cool. This is going to be really yeah, helpful. For this just went live yesterday. So we're like still tweaking and improving a few here, bugs here and there, but it's getting pretty maybe, solid. Maybe you want to just mention how long it took to pay contacts on the V1 of Hotspotty versus how long it's taking us to pay last month. Yeah, so yeah it's, like I, it it's takes hours, and it's then this is gonna take yeah. three minutes less. So, so even with Hotspotty One, um, which was obviously engineered specifically for payments, which was the first iteration of Hotspotty, you know, like that helped us automate quite a lot. But now, once all of the data is input, literally, you, you know, you, you print the report and then you say pay, and it's done. Yeah, you know, so it's gone from, you know, taking ages on spreadsheets to automating it a little bit in Hotspotty version one to now literally it taking moments, you know, like minutes to do everything. Obviously, you might want I to mean, like, it a little bit. Like for example, yeah. your commissions can be built automatically every month. For example, so. You, like the first of the month, you go to the commissions report tab and you can have the reports done. Maybe in the future, you can automatically, we find a way to do it that it automatically plays, pays everyone in the beginning of the month. Then you, you don't need to do mm -hmm. that. You don't need to do anything, but that's for the future. Yeah, yeah very cool. And also, I can, see, I can use this just with a couple hosts and not dealing with it. I was yeah. just talking with my buddy today. I'm like, oh, dude, I got to pay you 50% for last month. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we'll get to it. And it's like, oh, it'd be nice if that. <laughs> Automated, but even then, I've got a couple where, yeah, if it's a one button push, that makes it, you know, yeah, but even, even then, like, it's always so, good to have an overview because, like, some might have missing payment information and stuff. Like, if it's fully automated, you might miss out on that as well. And then you need emails to give you that overview. It's not a bad thing to have, like, an overview of what's happening, right? No, um, <laughs> it's good to know what's going on with your money. <laughs> also, you're yeah, dealing exactly. with money, yeah, exactly, yeah. And there's another thing if you add, let's say that you do your payments from another wallet, uh, that's not your hotspot wallet, uh, which is a common practice. Um, you can just add your wallets and not track the hotspot. Well, there will most likely not be any hotspots on it, but you can do that. And then it's this basically lists all the transactions for all of the wallets you added here, which you can filter as well uh, if you click on the labels, etc. But basically, um, if you add it, like your uh, H&T wallets of your contacts and the transaction appears, this will show a link to the commission report and it will show labels for all of your contacts here. So you visually see, okay, this payment included all these people, this payment included all these people, even if it's not clear, like that was a common problem when we, we were doing our payments, even with the CLI, like mm -hmm. it's just a pain. You don't know if it went true or not, etc. And now you're surfacing the, 
like the pending payments as well. You all automatically see like what's going on. Uh, it's really, really helpful. No, this is rad. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go implement this uh, when I get off this call and, and get a, get a couple people paid. Super cool. Thanks, guys. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we still we just launched, right? So there's still a chance of some like small tweaks uh, that need to be done, or maybe some bugs. But we're on it, and uh, yeah, feel free to report them. Of course, we're well, constantly I, working I don't on think it. Anything could possibly go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, one yeah. last thing: you can always join our Discord as well. That's it. Uh, a question I had for you guys. I haven't paid a ton of attention. I've been doing a ton of other projects. Have you seen that? What I thought was that really cool feature of like spawning a hex. Are you guys seeing a lot of people use that or is that not getting used as much as you thought or, or what are you seeing out of that? Um, it, we're getting, we're getting people creating channels every day, uh, yeah. a few channels, but then because of the limitations of this card that we have right now, I have a script that like if some a lot of people they just create a channel and they check it out and then they don't do anything. Uh, there are a few yep. channels that there are actually a lot of people using it and, and discussing things. Yep. But in general, it's not super used. Also, we didn't push it this feature too much yet as well. Right. Um, yeah, I saw this. But this we, have about two, Ireland. we have about two hundred of those uh, right now. Yeah. 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 I turned some I, clients I, I, on to. There's one in Ireland where there's like a bunch of talk on. I was like, oh, this is really cool. So yeah yeah in dublin yeah I and mean, we do have about there's about four or five large hexes where there has been quite a lot of collaboration including one in your neck of the woods which you help with right you promote uh, yeah, yeah I, I think i pushed some. out a little one down here we recently just had another res 4 go over 250 or something so the scale in san diego went from terrible to just like not great it's, it's nice <laughs> yeah awesome <laughs> it sounds good good stuff cool all right cool. guys is there anything else um you're thinking about that's kind of on your mind you want to share just uh um, yeah join our discord channel i guess what else are you gonna say Alexa? yeah you can i guess well just the, the discord is just hotspotty.net uh, forward slash discord and um for all feedback it's just feedback.hotspotty.net but in terms of uh building out functionality we've actually got quite a lot of other stuff on the roadmap but um we're probably best discussing that in a, another month or so with you. We'll have another session or whatever cool. to bring everyone yeah, up. Yeah, no, let's rally, rally yeah. back and figure out monthly that. call, man. Progress. <laughs> okay, you guys, get outside, get some sunshine. Stop, stop plugging your face <laughs> into the computer so much. Take like ten yeah. minutes off. <laughs> I should, I should do that. Cool. Oh, hilarious. Absolutely. Cool. Thanks, guys.